Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Shannon Ogden with the latest from Denver 7. Class of 2019. Thursday, the U.S. Air Force welcomed 989 second lieutenants. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the graduates of Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs 2019. And of those 258 are women, 527 plan on becoming pilots. Well, this afternoon, family and friends gathered to honor America's newest airmen and airwomen. President Trump delivered the keynote, and his speech focused on the triumphs of the graduating cadets and the future of our armed forces. Denver 7's Jason Grenauer today. The president's speech did have some political undertones, but for the most part, he kept his comments today here at the Air Force Academy about the graduates themselves, as nearly a thousand cadets became officers in our Air Force. A packed house for the literal pomp and circumstance of the Air Force Academy graduation. These graduates are some of the best young men and women in America. Accented by the presence of the president. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the commander in chief and the, and the president of the United, United States, States, Donald Trump. Trump. He spoke about military might. Today, Today you, you take, take your place as officers in the, in the most powerful Air Force in the history of our country, and, and frankly, and, and very easily in the history of the world. Including what he called the future, Space Force. In this stadium today are many of the future leaders who will develop the doctrine, strategy, and technology to restore America's legacy of leadership in space. In a lighter moment, the Commander-in-Chief called out a few cadets by name, Rhodes Scholars, All-Americans, and... Who has bravely fought his battle with, with cancer. cancer. Today, Parker Hammond graduates. They love you, Parker. And then, arguably the best graduation moment in the country. Especially for a happy couple. We just recently got engaged too, so it's just fun to celebrate with somebody that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with too. <laughs> and a family um, couldn't hold back the emotions. She's my life. So I just want to be a good role model to her. At the Air Force Academy, I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. Now not everybody was so happy. Not everybody was so happy to see the president. A small group, fewer than a dozen lined his route in protest, holding signs that say, love Trump's hate and dump Trump in 2020. Well, a special honor for the students and first responders who rushed to help during the STEM shooting. Now, every year, Douglas County Sheriff's Office holds a ceremony to recognize employees and members of the community. And this year, a special focus honoring the first responders, the students, the staff who saved lives at the STEM School Highlands Ranch. Eight students were injured. Senior Kendrick Castillo lost his life trying to stop one of those shooters. And after that shooting at STEM school, there was a campaign that started to honor Kendrick Castillo and his classmates with the Arthur Ashe Courage Award. Now, unfortunately, the ESPYs did not choose them. Boston Celtics legend and all-around trailblazer Bill Russell will receive this year's award. A homeless camp along the South Platte River has until next Tuesday to pack up and go because then comes the cleanup. The city of Inglewood says there's been so much damage to the banks, they'll have to reseed, rework that whole area. The city says it's devoting resources to helping the people living there right now find someplace else to go. So Governor Polis says he wants to clean up Colorado's air and achieve 100% renewable energy by 2040. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez has details on how this plan will benefit our Colorado. Located near I-70, as well as heavy industry, some people in Glowville say they're not breathing clean air. We're one of the most polluted areas in the nation. I know a lot of parents that just don't want their kids outside because there's just so much contamination from the highway, from the factories, from Suncor. Nola Miguel and Robin Reichardt both work for the GES Coalition, 
a group focused on the Globeville, Illyria, Swansea neighborhoods. We really care about our neighbors. We care about the, the well-being of our neighbors. We care about the health of our neighbors. Miguel says she applauds the governor's decision to clean up Colorado's air. I appreciate an effort towards bold actions because that's really what we need if, if we're going to address climate change. I think um, from our perspective, we've been saying this for a long time. It's about time. The governor says he'd like to see 940,000 zero emissions vehicles on the road by 2030, as well as building 33 fast charging stations along major highways. But Reichardt says he's worried about the pollution coming from another area. I guess my biggest concern is being a, a next door neighbor of Suncor is how, how, what's the plan to move the state away from this industry that's driving one of the drivers of the state economy and also what's driving some of the biggest uh, health concerns that we have in our neighborhood. The governor's office tells us they're aware of the pollution situation with Suncor. They say any future permitting decisions will be made with the best interest of the community in mind. Ivan Rodriguez reporting for us. The governor's office says it's aware of the pollution situation with Suncor and they say any future permitting decisions will be made with the best interest of the community in mind. From the First Alert Weather Center, let's take a quick look at your seven day forecast. As promised, things are looking up and up and up. What a glorious weekend we are in store for after the misery we have all been through. And this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for watching. We'll have another one for you later tonight. Also, download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.